Hello there. Right, let's have a look at some display options you have inside Lightwave. Now, Lightwave consists of two programs, uh, Modeler and Layout. Modeler is your workshop, and Layout is your virtual studio where you do all the filming and lighting and dressing the scene up and all the rest of it. So, we're in Modeler at the minute. Um, two things you want to have a look at. You might want to know how many polygons per object you're looking at, and we're in Modeler currently, and if we press the W key, we've got this thing called the the poly statistics panel up so if I'll close that down this is always going to be whatever I'm talking about shortcut keys unless I say hold the shift key down which basically means you're going to go for a uppercase letter everything's lowercase so lowercase no caps lock on press the W key you get a, a polygon stats panel now the polygon stats panel um, is going to tell you how many you've got of whatever you're looking at depending on what mode you're in now the modes I'm going to talk about here are down the bottom right, bottom corner here now I'm running version 9 so version 7 you won't have edges to look at you'll have points and polygons and volume so how many polygons do I have on this model on this layer I have 3473 gives you an idea okay so with that that's going to just conclude this tiny little segment on display um, just so you know um, on this section let's move over to layout so I can close that down I'm just going to hop over to layout I've got both running in the same scene now we're in this scene here now this scene how many polygons have we got in this scene so let's zoom out a little bit and see what we've got here now uh, this is just a basic layout of a scene we're looking at here so how many polygons do we have here well it's going to be the same thing you need to go and press the W key so press the W key this tells me how many polygons we have in the scene so the amount of polygons we got in the scene is about a quarter of a million polygons okay and blah 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 gives you some idea of how much memory this that, and the other it takes 60 megs of actual object memory and whatever so this is quite interesting it's telling you got a quarter of a million polygons so if you want to um, get good interaction in the viewport and at the moment this is drawing everything as I zoom in everything gets redrawn it doesn't jump out the bounding box you might have your scene jumping in and out and being uh, irritating by jumping in and out of bounding box how do I make it so it do doesn't jump in and out of bounding box or alternatively if you're getting really sludgy, sluggish viewport um, updates how do I make it jump into bounding box yeah you need to be able to control it so you can decide how things are working so you can work in the optimum way so again here we go right we're looking at an option okay so option begins with the letter O as an option lowercase again use your keyboard press O for option and there you go got the option panel up it says preferences we're going to call it options because the O key is linked to it makes more sense to me now in here we have lots of little tabs let's look at the display tab and let's look at uh, let's go and put the whole thing the whole viewport in front face wireframe and we'll zoom out a little bit more right so here we've got you can see this grid now this grid might not be big enough to display the area we're looking at so we can say well at the moment we've got a 30 by 30 grid type and they're two uh, meters apart from each grid and you might say well two meters is a, is a good distance it's basically as big as a person laying down is about six feet so it's two meters so that's good but I want my grid to extend a bit further so I can make my grid type bigger so let's make it a 50 by 50 grid takes it out to here or if I take it out to 100 by 100 there's 100 that's there's 200 meters by 200 meters okay so it's um, 100 meters 100 grid spaces times 2 200 meters blah, 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 300 feet there we go so that's basically 300 feet um, right so that's good or you could decide let's not have the grid let's turn it off so if you've got no grid or it's tiny then that's where you go and find it. Grid type, put it on 30 by 30, it's that big. If you want the grid spacing to be bigger than that, then we'll just say it's um, enough 10 meter grids. Yeah, so 30 feet. There we go. My grid size has changed. Okay. We also have a shortcut key for grid size, which is above your enter key, you'll see the square bracket keys, left and right square brackets. And we can zoom in and zoom out on grid size. Now, let me bottom right, bottom left hand corner, you can see what my grid is set to now. It's now set to 50. Okay, if I use my left bracket key, it goes to 20, and then back to 10 again, and then back to 5, and back to 2, and then down to 1. And that helps me navigate around my scene. 
as well because my actual my perspective view or my directive view to kind of make it more easy to understand is here yeah we're not looking for a camera at the minute we're looking for the um, perspective view which is like a directive it gives you an overall view of the scene okay so um let's do something else let's let's make sure so we wanted to go and follow this particular um item here which is this animated uh, transport a truck. We want to be able to follow him and see how he's looking. We've actually set a camera up just yet. We just want to see what it looks like from tailing him or whatever we're going to do. Let's go and centre him in the in the view of this perspective at all times. So click on that. This centres my view. I can then zoom in and I can rotate around. Okay, so I'm down here. I'll zoom right in and right down there. We'll sort of have a bird's eye view about there now I can't change where I am, it's it's to wherever this centre point is here is the centre of the viewport ok, so I can say I want to look at it there tight there even now when I scrub my view backwards and forwards, my perspective view is now locked to that if I unlock it, then you know it's now unlocked yeah, if I put it back again say that's a good place to be hit lock, it's now centered to it so I can rotate around there and zoom back and zoom forwards yep, ok, so that does that bit let's look at some other things then, so currently looking in wireframe, front face wireframe view, we've got different viewports different view draw styles, we're going to put in uh, this view here and as you see it's drawing everything, so back into options again so I go back to preferences, there we go and let's go to display and it's a single view, we've done these, this thing here, the next thing we're going to say is, in, is how is the scene drawn so how's the scene drawn, so at the moment it's saying interactive so it's going to try and draw every single thing you do, every rotation every zoom, every move of an object, it's going to try and draw it as you go and do it ok, so if I go and do this rotate around here yeah, it's pretty cool, it's sort of like updating, so this is set to uh, 300,000 polygons which if you remember when we looked in W key not that one, sorry when we looked in W key um, it says we've got 252,000 so I'll make 300,000 so it can definitely do it if I drop this down in a minute I'll show you what that does in a minute but currently interactive view drop that down delayed view what does that do? well when we, re when we re rotate it it's trying to keep up but if it has real big problems it'll sort of step through it so it's, it's ok with this for this particular little graphics card, we're ok with a, a third of a million polygons, it's fine right, and let's go and do to off as in dynamic update, don't dynamically update and we just go and rotate it and it's still ok yeah, so my graphics card's cool, it's just a way of making it do things, let's knock this down, let's see, instead of saying 300,000 let's say 30,000 polygons now ok, and then once we go round it, it's going to go and jump yeah, into bounding box mode of what it uh, uh, and leave anything that's it's going to go and jump into bounding box mode of everything apart from the current object if it possibly can be coping with that because this particular object here is less than thirty thousand polygons therefore it will it's okay the rest of it will jump into bounding box mode okay and let's go and put it onto delayed see what that does okay very similar and I'm going to put it onto interactive and there we go, we're sort of pretty cool with everything. Now, the other thing you can do is we can also um, show, at the moment we've got the viewport in shaded solid, we can go front face wireframe, we can go vertex mode, whatever. Let's go back to shaded solid. We can also say each object can be drawn differently in the scene as well, and that's in the scene editor. And this is here, original scene editor is going to say there, and I'm going to pop that back up. And what we've got in here, we've got our currently selected transporter, if I go here this view, this thing down here can do various things, it can hide an object, make it draw in bounding box or whatever, so let's go front face wireframe, so it's now in front face wireframe, we can reduce that down, and now this object is front face wireframe, but the rest of the scene, let's go and put it back into uh, options so preferences, there we go let's go and put it back into interactive and make it set another zero on it, there we go ok, so that's going to draw it, apart from that object it's going to be 
in wireframe and that can do our cells good just for a few things on display hope that sort of helps a bit of a mush but there you go catch you in a bit